my life before diagnosis was a normal teenager, young 20 year old from a small town in Mississippi, went to the lake on the boat all the week, you know, every weekend and uh, that changed drastically when I got diagnosed. I was in my third year of medical school. Amy was in her junior year of college. She had begun over the part of the fall to have some little uh, fevers. She was in school at Ole Miss in Oxford and she, she uh, didn't work the last week. She just didn't feel like it, which is very uncommon for Amy because she never quits anything that she starts. Amy had some biopsies and blood work and things done in Memphis. Amy and Christy, her roommate, went back to the college and her roommate called me that Sunday night and said, Amy, something's wrong. She's really sick. She had cerebritis, which is you know, the inflammation of the brain, which was the, the most outward symptom that she had. Everything was completely inflamed, lining of my brain, everything that could be out of whack was out of, you know, just completely fired up. I had hurt learned some about lupus in med school, but I was just starting my clinical years. When I finished my pediatric rotation that fall, I had a little 13-year-old that had lupus. And it was scary, I'll tell you, it was, uh, it was terrifying. At one time, I sat there beside her bed for four days and held her hand or held her because she was just absolutely terrified. When I went back and started my psychiatric rotation and we learned what Amy had had, which was lupus, that 13-year-old wasn't alive anymore. And I thought, gosh, this is an awful, awful disease. I made a choice in my life when I got diagnosed that I would not let the disease define me, that I would define the disease. And we've been very fortunate. I mean, Amy's had great doctors. She's always had insurance, family support, very supportive husband. We met in 1999 and she was telling me about, well, you know, I have lupus and I was in graduate school for microbiology and immunology. I said, oh, cool, tell me more. And I think that kind of floored her in the fact that I wasn't running away, that I was actually kind of curious about it and wanted to know more about it. And he's been there every step of the way and my family has been very supportive. That is what is so important, is having a really strong support system. We call it a cruel mystery because it can look so different from person to person. It can take so many years to be diagnosed, and it's very, very unpredictable. I believe helping solve the cruel mystery refers to the fact that so much of this about this disease is unknown. Everyone that I have met with lupus through the foundation or just out in the public, they do have different effects from lupus. I mean, what the textbook tells you are certain things, but in practice it's a little bit different. There's some fatigue, there's, you know, some things that she just can't do. You marry for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, for sicker, for, for healthier. It's, you do what you have to do. The toughest struggle was thinking I couldn't ever have children. We got married in 2000 and we were actually got the okay to try to have children in 2006. Got for it, we're fortunate enough to have a child, and I hope that she can get through, she can fight through it, and um, and feel better. I love her, and um, I hope she feels better. When I moved to Charlotte uh, to work as a physician, I got involved with the, the chapter here in the Charlotte area. A few years later, this poster came out from National, and I understood the meaning of the poster, but it made me think about Mardi Gras. We were just, we were out on the lake on the boat. It was late afternoon, and we, she just said, you know, what would you think about us hosting a lupus gala? And I said, well, that sounds great. Is there going to be an open bar? And she said, yeah. And I said, okay, that sounds great to me. <laughs> New Orleans has always been one of our favorite places and they got the idea of the gala and uh, I think it's grand. I mean, as much as this young lady inspired us, obviously our sister Amy is our inspiration. That they decided to do this event to raise awareness and money and, you know, to help research. I can't even really put into words how surprised I was that it was just, you know, because of me. Even at that first year, the night ended with people up on the stage singing into the mics and I thought, this is a pretty fun party. <laughs> you know, I always enjoy when they crown the king and queen. I always really enjoy that part. 
and then getting to see everyone, especially how well some of the lupus patients have done. I guess some of my funnest moments, honestly, has always been able to get on stage and sing at the end, whether they want me to or not. I always find myself with a microphone in my hands by the end of the night. I think really for me, so many of my colleagues that and friends, they bought into the event hook, line, and sinker and attended, donated, and brought friends and joined the committee. I couldn't thank them enough. It really honestly could not be possible if it wasn't for people stepping outside their comfort zone to be a part of what we do and to be a part of a night, even if they don't know what lupus is, but they come and they have a good time tonight and they buy something in the auction, they play in the casino, because every bit of that, we are going to be great stewards of their dollars that they've given to us. It's not a stuffy black tie event. It is a party from beginning to end. It is so much fun. But the underlying theme has always been making sure that we're, we're removing the mask of lupus. Well, I'm fortunate to be uh, somewhat involved in the Lupus Foundation of America through Ohio, as well as I feel very connected with the one here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I just, I don't know if I could say just one thing, but I can say that I feel the passion that these people feel to help find more answers, to help find the money, and the time to have more research done. I know how much it means to a lot of people. I've been to the walks, I've seen the effect that you have, I've been to the, of course, to the gala, and I, I don't know that, that you understand the impact that you have on people throughout the state, but I can tell you that it is pretty big and it is pretty large and it makes a very big difference to a lot of people. We feel it's very, very important that again, while we're looking to advance that medicine and science, we have people every single day that are being diagnosed that are living with a disease that need help. It's an exciting time for the future, really, because we are at a cusp in which there has never been more uh, treatments, possible treatments in development for lupus than ever before. Any way that this gala and the funds from it can help someone not have to stand in a hotel or in a hospital room and think what is going to happen next and it be the most horrible thought that you could have, then every cent that we raise is worth every, it's worth every penny. I want a day that we have another reason to have this event because this disease is cured. The Dickerson family is just phenomenal. There's really no one else like them. They were one of the first families since I've been a part of this organization that I met. Their passion for each other because of what they experienced with their own loved one having lupus is a powerful story. And they have taken that, wrapped it in love, put the financial support behind it, invited every single person that they knew to be a part of this for 10 years. And I can tell you that it is so rare to find a family that has done what they've done. I can't wait for the next 20. I, I'm looking forward to the day when we start making phone calls and they go, we're sorry, we don't have anywhere big enough in Charlotte to hold your event. That's, that's really what I hope happens one day. Have fun and spend some money and have a good time.